What if I told you that there was a non-league team in this village that I'm in right now who won the first ever World Cup? You probably wouldn't believe me. This video is gonna be an incredible one, let me tell you. But firstly, let me just prove something to you. When I was driving in, I wasn't expecting to see this, but look, hang on, we're gonna have to look at summertime in Britain. So the grass is really long. Look at this, here we are in County Durham, more specifically, West Auckland, home of the first World Cup. Honestly, this video is so a bit of me. People who know me and know my channel know that I love these weird and wonderful like footballing stories and intricacies that we have in the UK. We have so many cool teams and towns and villages and stuff that have amazing football teams and amazing football stories. And this one is honestly up there with one of the best. I had a wisdom tooth out um, about eight days ago now and I've not been able to film anything. So when I was like thinking of stuff to film, I was like, oh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be something uh, really good and really something that will get me interested. Wow, here we go, here is the trophy. We'll be getting onto that in a second. There's so much stuff around the village to tell you about the, um, about the first ever World Cup. It predates the FIFA World Cup. Is it an official World Cup, this one? We'll be getting into all that, but it's honestly mad. Look, there's a statue up here that I need to show you. We will actually be heading down to the stadium of the team who won the first ever World Cup very shortly. We'll be going down there, we'll be seeing what they're like sort of in the modern day as well. But look, just check this out. Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy, 1909 and 1911. And look, as you can see, there's a man kicking a football and there is also a man sort of trying to slide tackle him with a pick from one of the mines. So this is a mining village, an ex-mining village. And uh, yeah, the story of the World Cup is just unbelievable. A team completely made up of miners. They were absolute amateurs. Um, they weren't paid to play or anything like that. They just played for the fun of the game and uh, they ended up winning a World Cup. It is absolutely insane. Um, we are in Durham right now, County Durham, um, and back in the sort of early 1900s, uh, late 1800s, I guess, the industrial era of Britain, um, there were a lot of mines which obviously helped to power the industrial revolution and the economy and sort of um, were the first steps of where we are right now in the technological revolution. Um, history lesson over for a second. Let's just take a look at this. This is the 1909 one. So this is probably the first one here. So Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy, the original World Cup. I'll be telling you a little bit about Sir Thomas Lipton as well. Just hang on a second. But the fa uh, final played in Turin in April the 12th, 1909. West Auckland 2, winter hour, winter hour, winter hour of Switzerland, nil. Yeah, I followed them uh, in, the, in the Northern League, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's quite amazing how they won the World Cup and now they're in the Northern League. Yeah. You know? uh, they're about fifth in the Northern League. Yeah, 15th this season, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah World Cup, but it was a mistake, you know. They, yeah, so is it true you that... you know the story? Well, wasn't it... Because it's WAFC is the same initials as Woolwich Arsenal, Woolwich right? Woolwich Arsenal. But I've heard that that's a myth. No, that, that was right. That really? Was, yeah, okay. that was right. They thought they were getting Woolwich Arsenal. They yeah. West Auckland. <laughs> but they won it anyway, so Woolwich Arsenal might have lost. A pit village. I mean, it's a hell of a story. If yeah. They do a video in the club, you know. So, yeah, isn't the trophy in the clubhouse somewhere as well? I was going to go down there. Over there, there yeah. Yeah. The oh, is that it just there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I'll have a look later no, on. Yeah. The trophy's in there. It's, you've got to go down the passage and it's uh, a little lounge. Oh, okay, it's amazing, there. yeah. In yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, in there. They lost the cup and the money when they were over there. Have you never seen the day? It was it? stolen, wasn't it? Yeah, the it was cup. stolen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they were stuck over there and apparently a woman from Manchester sent them the money to get them back home and the village like they had a whip round a whip yeah. round they bought the cup back off her she was i think she was an old woman that's so right yeah and then later on the village brought it back and then it got yeah, stolen it got from the village stolen, got st never found believe it or not it was in a, that pub up there as a pub years, up there yeah right stood on the bar yeah no security around it or anything it was never touched <laughs> really? they put it in a club put it in a cabinet with alarms on Somebody pinched it. And now it's a replica, isn't it? Yeah. It's a replica. Uh, Bloody hell. Uh, Sods all. 
Alan there, what a lovely guy. He um, came up and spoke to me just um, just while on camera. We were chatting off camera for ages as well. Um, but let me just show you this, um, just first. Look, this is the second time they won it. The final was played in Turin on April the 17th, 1911. I'll obviously tell you about Sir Thomas Lipton and what the trophy means and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, but this, I think, was unveiled by Alan was telling me the guys behind Alfie the same pet, the program, if you know that. But look at this, West Auckland, currently a team who are in the English non-league system, a few divisions below like the National League and all stuff like that, beat Juventus of Italy 6-1. Juventus of Italy, who recently have had Cristiano Ronaldo and have won European Cups and have won the most amount of uh, Italian leagues, lost 6-1 to this village team of miners. Miners like this man here and this one here as well. Um, and here's the team as well. We can't, of course, uh, miss out the incredible names of the of the men that would have played. Um, but yeah, Alan was saying that, and I was gonna come on to this, and you may have heard this fact before, maybe you've heard about this story slightly, but um, West Auckland FC, of course, WAFC, was the same initials as Woolwich Arsenal. But I've heard and I've seen online that apparently that isn't true that they wanted to invite Woolwich Arsenal, but it was sent to West Auckland instead. Sir Thomas Lipton, he was the man behind Lipton's tea that you might have had, or Lipton iced tea. He also had shops all up and down, uh, all up and down the country. Um, a bit of an entrepreneur, philanthropist, philanthropist of his time. Um, really forward-thinking guy. He wanted to create a global football tournament, or at least an international football tournament, anyway. Um, and he fronted the money, he created the trophy and stuff like that, I believe. And he invited the German, the Swiss, and the Italian FAs, of which they all said yes. He also invited the English. FA who said no we're not going to submit any teams to your competition which is why he had to go and look for a non-league team which is why I've heard that the whole Woolwich Arsenal thing isn't actually um, is more of a myth WAFC I think it's a myth because actually Woolwich Arsenal at the time aren't the Arsenal that we know today I think they were a second division team in the early 1900s so they weren't the massive Arsenal that we know of today but um, yeah I don't know could be a myth might be true um, a lot of the stories get lost over time but apparently the uh, trophy is in the West Auckland working men's club so let's go and have a look in there come on there we go home of the first World Cup how mad is this right let's get in there hi there um, I'm just wondering if I'd be able to see the trophy of the first World Cup, yeah. if it's anywhere. Yes, okay, mate, thank you. Yeah. So Thomas Lipton Lounge, there we go. Oh, amazing, thank you very much. Oh, wow, so here it is. So yeah, you say this is a replica then, yeah. And there we go, look, 1909 to 1910, that's the first time they won it against Swiss opposition, and then 6-1 against UV. And there it is, the first ever World Cup. The original. Oh, that's the original trophy there, yeah. So that's the one that was stolen, never found as well. There we go, the first World Cup. This is certified that West Auckland WMC have received the story of the first World Cup and thereby joins a privileged and exclusive set in so much as true story is little known. Wow, and there are the teams as well. Yeah. From 1909 and 19... That one's 1909 as well. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's Juventus there, yep, yeah, and that's West Auckland. Oh, the stripes of Juve, yeah. It's just a treasure trove of football history around there. So that is Sir Thomas Lipton himself, yes. Yeah, that's all. So Lipton, yeah, Lipton T. That's all gave the World Cup. And that's who formed it, yeah. So that's, I guess, Thomas Lipton there in... India would that be with elephants mm, and like that, I don't know. getting tea somewhere I suppose yeah creating his empire and then making the making the cup later on wow these old working men's clubs are absolutely brilliant they're way bigger than what they seem look you wouldn't even know that was really open um, but it is and you can walk in and see the first ever World Cup trophy in this village here absolutely mad yes it's a replica because the first one was stolen and never found as well hopefully one day it's unearthed somewhere but yeah they've got that 
<laughs> they got that World Cup uh, trophy in there. Let's have a quick look at this bus stop. There's something I wanted to show you quickly. Hang on. Yeah, and look, even on the bus stops here, they have um, they have like bits about the World Cup. Look at this. There's even like bits up there. There's like more information on West Auckland itself and a bit of a few of the historical buildings and stuff. Um, but it remains a mystery why lowly West Auckland, an amateur team struggling near the bottom of the Northern League, were invited by Sir Thomas uh, to represent their country. The suggestion is that the invitation was sent to West Auckland when it was intended for another more famous WAFC, Woolwich Arsenal is improbable more likely one of sir thomas employees knew about the northern league and made a recommendation see that's what i thought woolwich arsenal weren't the big arsenal um that we knew to this day and um, let's just see what it says on here as well so um there's a bit about alf ramsey somewhere this original world cup was stolen in 1994 and never recovered an exact replica made by sheffield silversmith jack spencer remains a powerful reminder of one of the football's most incredible stories the film was made in 1982 the captain's story starring dennis waterman and directed by tom clegg and a stage play alf ramsey knew my grandfather by ed war and trevor wood was uh, first performed in 2009 so some really really big names um in entertainment entertainment and in football have been involved with this story it is really unbelievable and if you're a football fan and you're from the United Kingdom or you're visiting the United Kingdom to watch football or um, to come and see some stadiums or whatever so I know people come from all over to come and see Arsenal play or Chelsea or Liverpool or Man United or go to the stadium tours of Wembley or West Ham or Spurs you have to come and check out this small village in County Durham All you've got to do is compare this place to Turin, which is where, of course, Juventus are from. And I actually think Torino, the other team from Turin, actually played in the tournaments as well. Or one of the tournaments or a few of the tournaments. I'll put on screen the sort of tournament uh, fixtures and results and stuff just so you can see it. But I mean, compare that to where we are right now. And you see what an incredible achievement it was for this team of miners and of local people to beat big city teams who went on to do amazing things in the game and still are doing amazing things in the game to beat them and not only beat them but absolutely smash them and to win those trophies both times but here we're coming up to now look West Auckland FC let's go and see what the club is like these days god like I said I needed a video to wet oh bloody hell I needed a video to wet my whistle after having like a week off I hate having time off um, filming and just check this out look the gates open we've got lucky Oh my God, look at this. Look at this, they even have, wow, these amazing gates with the actual trophy there, the Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy, the first World Cup. Of course, it wasn't the FIFA World Cup. This predates the FIFA World Cup by a couple of decades, of course. But just look at that, check that out. Yeah, so forget Uruguay and Brazil and England in 66 and um, Italy. I know they won a couple of the first sort of um, earlier FIFA World Cups. I am currently stood on the pitch of the very first World Cup winners, West Auckland FC, winners of the World Cup in 1909 and 1911. And just look at this lovely stadium that they have here. Check this out, this lovely stand, and it's beautifully kept as well. Um, they're currently just doing a few um, renovations to, the, obviously the goals are down, they're just like looking after the grass, I shouldn't say renovations, or maybe renovations, they put this new um, sort of little clubhouse in, in the corner here, that's Cliff there, the, um, the groundsman, I was just chatting to him off camera, absolutely lovely guy, you come to these, these like villages and stuff, and everyone is always so nice, but um, yeah, it's absolutely amazing to think that we are now inside the stadium of the first ever World Cup winners. And the division they play in, so I'll bring up their Twitter profile just now. Look, currently in the EBAC Northern Division 1. 
but also on their Twitter profile, winners of the first World Cup in 1909 and 1911. The fact that they're in the EBAC uh, Northern Division 1 and those other words about them being the first World Cup winners, it doesn't quite compute, does it? I mean, the World Cup we see is an international trophy and stuff, so it wasn't really a World Cup. But I guess it is the, a World Cup. Um, it was an international tournament, one of the first international tournaments of its kind in the world. Trendsetters, this team here, they um, they really uh, yeah broke the mould of what these football teams were doing teams of mining towns um the mining villages you know going out and um seeing new parts of the world that they wouldn't have seen before um eating spaghetti for the first time i think alan earlier on in the video was telling me off camera that they ate spaghetti and one of the players said what am i going to do with this knit a jumper they hadn't even seen spaghetti before yet they were playing in world cups and winning world cups it's stories like these i which is why i love football so much the fairy tales of football and so what's the national league fifth tier national league north is sixth tier and i think the division that these lads are in are even maybe two or three below that even so i think they might be correct me if i'm wrong people eighth ninth tier somewhere around there and yet of course they beat Juventus 6-1 in a World Cup final and I keep saying it but it's unbelievable um, these stories absolutely tantalise me but look the story of West Auckland's first World Cup when the British millionaire grocery mag grocery magnate Sir Thomas Lipton was honoured by the Italian government in 1904 he asked what he could do in return the Italians replied organised an international football tournament and his duty took place in Turin in April 1909 top teams from Italy Germany Sw and Switzerland were selected to represent their countries but the Football Association of England declined to, nom declined to nominate a team and that's what I'm telling you about. Um, well, here we go. Look, the mystery remains about why West Auckland were invited um, by Sir Thomas Lipton to represent Great Britain. They were then an unknown team of amateurs struggling near the bottom of the Northern Amateur League. It suggested they were that the organisers thought they were inviting Woolwich Arsenal, but their invitation was in error, more probably, and employees... Yeah, we saw that earlier um, as a recommendation from his employee. Um, yeah, and just like some of the stuff here, I won't go through it all right now. Of course, they beat um, Stuttgart, of course, I think, um, in the semi-final. I would have shown you the sort of route map to the finals and stuff from earlier on when I was walking in to the stadium. Um, the story's been made into a film, but yeah, even inside the stadium, imagine supporting this team and coming and supporting them from the terraces here in, you know, the non-leagues, regional non-leagues of English football, knowing that they won the World Cup. It is absolutely mad. Of course, not the FIFA World Cup, but a World Cup of its kind, you know, one of the first of its kind. Oh my God, how have I never been here before? What a way to start off um, my videos again after having that week off. The most boring week of my life, sitting around waiting for my mouth to heal. But we're back, we're back on the road. I'm filming another video today and then two tomorrow as well. So I'm filming four videos in the space of two days. This is new, by the way. Um, but yeah, amazing to see um, these teams sort of progressing. And actually, look, this is actually the badge of the club. This isn't just to sort of commemorate the Sir Thomas Lipson trophy. This is the actual badge of the club. So it's not like um, sort of other badges which might have something like of the town or whatever, or maybe a church or an animal in some cases. Is, this is the Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy and that is on the badge of this non-league team. And Cliff just showed me around the um, the new little sort of clubhouse thing there um, at the end of the video and he gave me my very own Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy pin badge West Auckland Town FC 1893 they were formed um, as the pin badge tells us. I love that. What a cool club. What an amazing story as well. First video back since the old wisdom tooth. And um, what a one to start it off with. I'm not gonna let that dog scare me again. Please hit that like button. It really, really does help. And if you don't, the favorite player at your club, the transfer window is open right now. If you don't hit the like button, your favorite player is gonna be sold to your biggest rival. So you better hit it. Please also subscribe. It'd really, really help me out. Um, yeah, cheers. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave some videos on screen as ever. If you could click on one to carry on watching, that'd be highly appreciated. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.